thanks again for the invitation and I'm fully aware that this has been a very long day for most of us. Therefore, I promise that I'm going to talk about something new. The genesis of the educated decision maker, the genesis of the EDM. And I assume that in the next two minutes, it will change the way how you see the world, in four minutes, how you see people, and hope, hopefully, at the end of the talk, how you see yourself. We have recently heard a lot about that the world has been changing, about the fact that there is a huge transformational process, mainly driven by technology. We're using big, fat words, such as sharing, own data, SCA, SEO, SCM, mobile, social, and so on. And that's pretty boring. We could talk about it for ages, because something really, really important is missing. There has been an even bigger trend, a mega change, a movement, a new reality. The genesis of the educated decision maker. This new reality is based on our ability leveraging our learnings and experiences from the last 15, 20 years in the internet space and not only applying it into our daily life, which is a big thing in itself, but also generating a new level of skills and knowledge. So also when we are talking about the transformation of normal people, average people, passive, reactive consumers to educated decision makers and the term Digital literacy doesn't really cover this thing. Well, how did it happen? How did that happen? Almost unnoticed, but easy to tell, easy to understand, and very difficult for companies to deal with, to cope with it. Actually, it's freaking them out. <laughs> the evolution has happened in three phases. The, fir the first phase, the exploring phase. Actually, question to the audience, who's older than 25? Raise your hand. Older than 30? 35? It's good. Then probably you're old enough to understand the first phase because it was starting mid of the 90s, the end of the 90s, um, when, when a chosen few of us were, were able to find websites, sometimes with really strange content. Myself, I tried to connect to the internet, I think it was 95 or 96 with CompuServe. So, and you know, maybe this modem sound, and I have to tell you, it didn't work. But the problem was, there was nobody I could ask for advice. So I had to put away the internet for half a year. Imagine that in 2015. With the termination of the Internet Explorer, this phase is over now. The second phase, or wave, the enabling phase. Platforms were helping people to buy and sell stuff online eBay was the first social commerce site. They didn't know at this time. Websites were helping people to find platform websites like Google. Remember Google's mission about organizing the world's information, connecting people. It was not Nokia, it was Facebook. Communication, Skype and so on, LinkedIn, there are more examples. So people were now able to make educated decisions. The third phase, third wave, is the empowerment phase. And that's pretty important and really, really interesting because people now are empowered. People have now more information. People are now self-confident doers. And there are a lot of apps and example empowering apps and just to mention a few of them. Actually, who knows Fitbit? Who is using Fitbit? Okay, so great, you do your 10,000 steps. That's a good thing, uh, normally. But there's much more, there's much more. Because in the future, what I assume is, for example, you did, say, last year 120 times sport. You were never in the critical phase based on your tracking. In the future, you will take your health file and you will go to the insurance company and say, guys, I'm in the top 5% of my age group in terms of health scores, so I want to have a 50% discount. I don't want to pay for the average. I want, you know, a fair bargain. Another example, as you see, zip car or, or sharing is, is about mobility. And I see uh, quite a young audience. I guess that 50% of you won't buy and own a car in the future. 
you will share a car, you will rent a car. And as an educated decision maker, you can decide among various options, buying, sharing, and so on. So that means in a nutshell, as an EDM, your first time in the driver's seats ever. That hasn't happened in the past. Netflix are other examples. There are a lot of other examples. Um, there are plenty of them. Just another example, if you want to learn a language, ich bin 13 Jahre, ich finde das gut. Das heißt, wenn Sie Deutsch lernen wollen. So if you want to learn German, you will use Duolingo to do that. If you, and that's something maybe more for the girls, if you want to know whether a lipstick fits to you or not, you're going to use the makeup genius from L'Oreal. But just an advice, don't do that in a restaurant. And don't do it as a man in a restaurant. <laughs> because people are really staring at you. Um, another example, if you want to add some education, and you get great education here, you go on Khan Academy uh, and you get some online education for free. You just edit. And my favorite example is Goderm, an example about a health app from Germany. So if you think, whoa, there is something on my skin, you just take, you take a picture, then you send it to your online dermatologist, and he will let you know if it's better to see a doctor or not. It's a sort of skin, skin cancer protection app. Weird thing. Or you could also order fresh food via Amazon Dash. Now you could say, okay, again, the same thing, boring story. We are talking about the digital natives and the immigrants don't get it and, and so on. But it's not the case. You know, if I see here on this side, I can see probably Mr. Bargenhunter. He has experience now more than 15 years with comparison sites, so he knows how to get a fair deal. Or there's Mrs. King.com using her lunch breaks, playing casual games, and so on. So when we talk about the educated decision maker, we're talking about, about you, about everybody. Maybe give you an example from my side, how I experienced the empowerment phase. Last November, I did a self-experiment 48 hours in Berlin, just with digital products, not older than five years. So I was ordering tickets and car sharing and so on. And what I found out that there's always room for improvement. So I had to pay in cash my Starbucks coffee because the Starbucks app hasn't been launched yet in Germany. I was watching Netflix, I was using PayPal, uh, PayPal Mobile and so on and Airbnb. But what I found out is that sometimes it's easier when you pick up the phone or the when you directly talk to people, saves you time, money, and it's much more fun. Uh, another rather unplanned example I had two weeks ago in Miami. I had a meeting uh, with a client and then I asked the client, yeah, would you be so kind to call me a taxi? And he was saying something about Uber. Then I went to, to the receptionist and I said, you know, would you be so kind to call me a taxi? And she was staring at me and like I'm a man from the moon. Don't you use Uber? And uh, it was a little bit embarrassing for both sides. Um, <laughs> But there's the flip side of the, of the digital stuff. Um, she didn't know anymore how to call a taxi. So some things you take for granted, she just did, she didn't know anymore. Coming back to the audience and, and just to give you maybe a little bit of advice. So if I were you, in order, and just an advice, in order to become a real millennial EDM. First thing, try everything. Don't be lazy. There are so many things coming up. So you have to be in the loop. So I think that that's very important. Try to understand the how and the why. So think about consequences, because there are some consequences. So just think about what you do. And I know when you're young, sometimes not so easy, <laughs> even for the older ones, but it's very important. Third advice, start coding in really to really to fully understand. Because never, never ever depend on tech people. You have to understand how it works. Create your own legion. As we all know, we are in a very connected world. So when you do good things and you understand how it works, then you can not only do good things, you do great things. And last but not least, reverse mentoring. Try to help your parents and your teachers. Really try to help them to understand what's going on. But on the other hand, be open for constructive feedback because sometimes, and 
really sometimes, your parents know better than you what's good for you. There was always one more thing. There's one more thing. We actually entering the fourth phase, uh, the enhancement phase. With the internet of things in a broad sense, everybody can become superman or superwoman. There are new ways to see, to hear, to smell, to taste. But this is another massive story on its own. So maybe we can cover that next time. So coming back to the starting point, it would be great if you can find your, your answer to the question, am I an EDM or to the statement, I'm an EDM. Actually ask this question Omar. He's a strategy guy from Crispin Porter. That's one of the hot, hot advertising agencies in the US. And he came up with a great answer. Well, I'm an EDM because I'm always connected and always curious. And I'm constantly trying to learn more about work, the world around me and the products that I buy and the companies that I support. So it's now your, your turn. So come up with your answer. Make the best out of it. So it's all about, it's all, all for you. So just do whatever you want. Thanks. <laughs>